All right, where I left off is I made a background copy because I wanted to onion skin my plan or at least my sketch, even though I might veer from the sketch. So then I take that copy and I move it all the way to the top and the shortcut for that is command right bracket. So command left bracket will move it down, command right bracket will move it up. Now, why is it called onion skinning? It's an old architectural drafting term. It's because the, the vellum, which was like a 20% film vellum made of plastic uh, since the 1940s, is what's used to like trace schematics for blueprints and for drafting. And they call that paper, which is kind of a brownish color, onion skin, because it's like the peels on, a, on an onion. Um, so we need to turn this into tracing paper. And we do that by taking the opacity on that copy layer down, just the one on the top, to about 30%. And then we don't want to mess with it. We don't want to accidentally select it. So we're going to lock it with the padlock. And just for good measure, I would go ahead and lock your background as well. So you're not accidentally going to engage with these pixel raster layers, which are going to be disappear by the end of the project. So they're only revealing our, our chosen shapes. Now what's nice about onion skinning is that is the only layer that shouldn't be 100% opacity. Right? But it shows me like having a flap of tracing paper over where I'm layering up my colored paper cutouts. It shows me where everything should go. So what's my next biggest shape that I think I want to use? Maybe these circles, uh, the, the rosy cheeks. So what do I do? I use the shape tool again. It's the third from the bottom. I got to hold down on it to open the drawer. Come on, work for me. For some reason, it's not working for me. So let me try reducing down a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to click on ellipse to get that tool. And then to get perfect circles, I'm going to hold down shift while I drag and drop. Okay. Then, let's see. So I'm selecting on a locked layer, on the background layer. And so when I use that and I hold down shift, it's going to give me, whoops, <laughs> come on, it should give me an ellipse. It should give me a perfect circle and it should make it its own layer. There it is. And then I can choose my own color. If I turn off my onion skin or if I keep my onion skin on the top here, I can just turn it off. and turn off this background so I can see the color I want it to match and just steal it directly. And then I can use the onion skinning to use the move tool to put it in place. So there's really only two tools we're gonna to be using a lot of, and that's the vector shape tools and the move tool. Now the technique we're gonna use a lot is the free transform technique, which is under edit, free transform. That allows us to scale it, rotate it, Distort it, flip it, warp it. Now, why might we need that? Because to get this kind of shape, I'm going to need to warp an ellipse tool. But this is the beauty of vectors, because they're always perfectly clean at any size. As long as it's still a vector shape, you can see in the little corner icon, I can just duplicate it, Command-J, and get another copy, and then move that over. So duplicate is another technique that's incredibly helpful. Now, how do I make this mouth? I'm going to do the same thing. Circle tool, draw it. I can change the color directly if I want. Let's just make it something dark so I can see it clearly. And now I'm going to hit Option Command T, which is the same as going to Edit and Free Transform. I get my transform box. I'm going to right click inside that and I'm going to say Warp. Very, very helpful, just like it was in exercise one. And now I'm going to move that and change its shape into this frown. I don't need to match it exactly, but by having that sketch 
as kind of a way to check yourself, you're going to see how sensitive these shapes are to any kind of variation. But as long as you like what you're making, that works for the emoji. Next, this is the beauty of graphic design. It's actually best practice not to warp an individual ellipse for each eyebrow and the mouth. Best practice is to make one really good element or asset that you like, like this. And if I want to, I can Option Command T it again because it's not quite symmetrical. And I can warp it just to push it symmetrical. You need a lot of practice, right? And then you can duplicate it. This is best practice, right? And then take that duplicate and Option Command T, scale it down and flip it to be the eyebrow. And you can see that my emoji, that's exactly what it did. The exact same shape that was the mouth is what also makes these eyebrows. So it also makes unhappy eyes. So I might change my design and just make these unhappy eyes. And if I turn off the onion skin, this is what I have so far. Those are my vector shapes. So then how can I match that eye? Would it make sense to have to rebuild it? I just Command J, duplicate it, and then Option Command T, right click, flip it horizontally. And because I made it almost perfectly symmetrically, I'm impressed with how symmetrical that is. It actually doesn't make much of a difference. So I'm just going to move it over to the other eye. And I can use my onion skin to kind of line it up in the right place. So that's what I have so far. And at any time, I can change the color of any of these just by double-clicking on the preview icon for the shape layer. So if I wanted to turn it to a brown instead, which might be nice, instead of the, the heavy black, I can kind of find that color. And then for the others, I can just steal that color from the one I already chose. Okay. But maybe I'll leave the mouth black for now. Next, how do I get something as crazy as this kind of cloud, because I wanted a cloud of smoke that was like this uh, head being exploded. Just lots of circles, right? Lots of basic shapes. So I start. So here's one thing that might happen to you. When you hold down shift and make a new shape in Photopea on top of an existing shape, it actually creates what's called a compound path. It puts them both in the same layer while still being a vector. That's actually something I haven't noticed in Photoshop with shape tools. That's pretty helpful. But it might limit the shapes you're able to make, right? Because then if I rotate this or if I, whoops, command, I got to do option, option, command T. If I rotate it and change it, I have to make sure I'm only selecting that layer instead of both of them. So it's a little annoying because it's it's hard to then option command T this one, even though they're in the same layer. So I recommend instead of using that compound path ability by holding down shift and drawing on top of an already selected shape, you do them each as their own shape. So how do you do that? You always start start your shape like your circle without holding down shift. Once you've started it, hold down shift. And then it will always be a new shape. Shift at the beginning means you want to add it to the existing vector layer. Shift after you've started it means you want it to be perfectly circular. And then you can Option Command T it and shrink it down. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to build a lot of these circles. I'm going to do it quickly just by Command J and then Option Command T and growing them. And then Command J and then Option Command T and then growing. 
And then option command, uh, no, first duplicate, command J. Whenever you do command J, you'll see that it will say copy in the shape layer. So it shows you which layer you're copying from and then how many copies you're making. And then you can use the move tool to move those copies around and then option command T for free transform to shrink it down, move it into place, hit return, next one. Oh, I'm, I'm going to just duplicate it, option command T, move it, grow it, hit return, command J, option command T. So you can get incredibly complicated shapes by layering up multiple basic shapes. And as long as they're all the same color, they'll all look like they're the same shape. I'm going to add one here so it looks a little bit more like smoke. Then I'm going to Command J, Option Command T. And I'm just going to keep building this smoke with different size circles that are a little asymmetrical. Command J, Option Command T. Command J, Option Command T. And even though we're changing the size of all these duplicates, we never have to worry about the resolution changing or getting worse because these are vectors. They're always perfectly clean. Command J, Option Command T. That's why they can't be rasterized. Otherwise, the computer would have to invent pixels. Here it just, it just matches the mapping of the vector. And then I'm going to do one more, Command J, Option Command T, and then I'll show you kind of what I've got. Shrink that down, put it up here. So if I turn off my onion skinning, that's what I got. All these different circles. If I use my Move tool and have Auto Select Layer checked, I can hold down Shift. and select all of these. You see how they're all lighting up? And I can add these others. So now they're all selected. You can hold down shift and select the layers or you can click on them. Now I want to treat that all as one shape. But if I merge them together, that would rasterize them. So what I do, this is a new skill, new technique, is I group them. Grouping is organizational. It makes a layer within a layer. It makes a folder for your layers. So right next to the, the bottom of your layer window where it says new layer, it's a little post-it, is a little folder icon. You want to say new folder. But if you have layers selected already, when you click that, it will put those layers into the folder. So now this is all on one asset, one folder. Not only can it be turned on and off easily, all those vectors live inside that folder. And I can do command or option command T to that folder. And if I want to just hold down shift and stretch that up a little bit, I can. Right? If I want to rotate it a little bit, I can. If I want to stretch it in one dimension, if I want to distort it, I can, just to make this a little bit more interesting. The one thing you can't do on a compound path, on groups of, of vectors all grouped in the folder, is you cannot warp, right? That's because there's no center to it for it to, to put a warp grid from, because there's multiple centers. But everything else you can do in compound. And if you don't like it, you can always just do Command-Z to before you free transformed. And you can try it again. So I think I like it a little bit more like that. And maybe I'll just grow it all a little bit. So this is kind of the basis of kind of this smoke cloud. Also, as a folder, unfortunately, there's no way to change the vector color of the whole folder. Right? I have to go in individually and like pick 
kind of the color I want. So I want kind of a, a sooty gray. And then I'm just going to use that 